Good morning, everybody. I'm Phil Brown with New Hampshire Audubon, and I'm coming to you live with a book reading of Owl Moon by Jane Yolen. And today I have my trusty assistants here helping me with this book. Um, and they have some of their own owl friends with them today. What do you have there, Oliver? We have a barn owl, right? And what do you have? What, what owl is that? A great horned owl. And a great horned owl. So, owls are, um, are in our woods in New Hampshire. We have um, about six species of owls that are regular residents or visitors in the state. Um, a couple of those are way more common than the others. Uh, throughout most of the woodlands, we have barred owls and great horned owls. They're both very widespread, and maybe they're hooting from your own backyards, like they are in our backyard once in a while. There are also eastern screech owl and northern sawwet owl, uh, both a little bit less common, and occasionally uh, long eared owl and short eared owl, and every once in a while a barn owl. We have owls at New Hampshire Audubon's McLean Center and in Concord. Um, that's our headquarters. And um, currently, um, uh, though the center is closed, visitors can still visit some of the owls and other raptors in the mews behind the building. So New Hampshire Audubon is, uh, is the organization that uh, is here to help protect New Hampshire's natural environment for wildlife and people. Um, we have um, we have a few centers around the state. We have sanctuaries, wildlife sanctuaries for wildlife and people. And uh, we do lots of environmental education. We're coming to you in new ways, such as these virtual videos. And we'll have lots of other exciting ways to keep you engaged. So, uh, so uh, consider supporting us. Um, and in a minute here, I'll get going with the book. Just letting a few more people join in. I think Alden's ready. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, let's get reading here. So, Owl Moon. This book is really, um, it's a snowy scene. So, you know, even though it's, it's a nice warm spring day right now, it's the middle of May, um, owls are still out there calling, but they start calling in the winter. Owls are some of the earliest breeding birds in our area. So they start hooting to each other even in the cold of January. Uh, the great horned owl is probably the first, one of the first nesting birds in this region. Um, right now, owls have young, and some of them are already fledged out of the nests. Um, around here, our barred owls are probably very close to that point. All right, without further ado, Owl Moon. It was late one winter night, long past my bedtime, when Pa and I went owling. There was no wind. The trees stood still as giant statues, and the moon was so bright the sky seemed to shine. Somewhere behind us a train whistle blew, long and low, like a sad, sad song. train out here. Let's see the train out there. I could hear it through the woolen cap Pa had pulled down over my ears. A farm dog answered the train, and then a second dog joined in. They sang out trains and dogs for a real long time, and when their voices faded away, it was quiet as a dream. We walked on toward the woods, Pa and I, Our feet crunched over the crisp snow, and little gray footprints followed us. Pa made a long shadow, but mine was short and round. I had to run after him every now and then to keep up, and my short, round shadow bumped after me. But I never called out, if you go owling, you have to be quiet. That's what Pa always says. I had been waiting to go owling with Pa for a long, long time. 
They're always quiet when we're owling, right? There they go, off into the snow. We reached the line of pine trees, black and pointy against the sky, and Pa held up his hand. I stopped right where I was and waited. He looked up as if searching the stars, as if reading a map up there. The moon made his face into a silver mask. Then he called. Woo, 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 woo. The sound of a great horned owl. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. There they are hooting. You can see how he cups his mouth here as he's calling to help make the sound go further. Thanks, Aldi. We'll try that after the book. Yeah. Again he called out, and then again. After each call, he was silent, and for a moment we both listened. But there was no answer. Pa shrugged, and I shrugged. I was not disappointed. My brothers all said, sometimes there's an owl, and sometimes there isn't. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yes. That's how it goes sometimes. Still an owl. But there is something in that tree, if you look closely. Looks like a, a raccoon, doesn't it? Yeah, that's an owl there. We walked on. I could feel the cold as if someone's icy hand was palmed down on my back. And my nose and the tops of my cheeks felt cold and hot at the same time. But I never said a word. If you go owling, you have to be quiet and make your own heat. We went into the woods. The shadows were the blackest things I had ever seen. They stained the white snow. My mouth felt furry, for the scarf over it was wet and warm. I didn't ask what kinds of things hide behind black trees in the middle of the night. When you go owling, you have to be brave. Isn't that right, Aldi? Yeah. Yeah. Scare away the scary things behind the trees. Yes. Then we came to a clearing in the dark woods. The moon was high above us. It seemed to fit exactly over the center of the clearing, and the snow below it was whiter than the milk in a cereal bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a cereal bowl with white milk. It does, doesn't it? That's a bright... Bright white snow there Bright from the moon. Snow. Yeah. <sighs> I sighed, and Pa held up his hand at the sound. I put my mittens over the scarf of my mouth and listened hard. And then Pa called. Woo, 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 woo. Ooh, ooh. I listened and looked so hard my ears hurt that my eyes got cloudy with the cold. Pa raised his face to call out again, but before he could open his mouth, an echo came threading its way through the trees. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Pa almost smiled, then he called back. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Just as if he and the owl were talking about supper, or about the woods, or the moon, or the cold. I took my mitten off the scarf of my mouth, and I almost smiled too. The owl's call came closer, from high up in the trees, on the edge of the meadow. 
Nothing in the meadow moved. All of a sudden, an owl shadow, part of the big tree shadow, lifted off and flew right over us. We watched silently with heat in our mouths, the heat of all those words we had not spoken. The shadow hooted again. Pa turned on his big flashlight and caught the owl just as it was landing on a branch. Big owl. So close to it. Yeah. Lucky to be that close to an owl. It's not every day we get to be that close to an owl. What kind of owl? Great horns. Great horns, yeah. For one minute, three minutes, maybe even a hundred minutes, we stared at one another. Big owl, isn't it? Then the owl pumped its great wings and lifted off the branch like a shadow without sound. It flew back into the forest. Time to go home, Pa said to me. I knew then I could talk. I could even laugh out loud. But I was a shadow as we walked home. When you go owling, you don't need words or warm or anything but hope. That's what Pa says, the kind of hope that flies on silent wings under a shining owl moon. That's the end of this story. I hope you enjoyed Owl Moon. Maybe now we can give a little hoot for an owl. We have a different kind of owl that lives behind our house. What kind of owl lives near a us? A barred owl. Say it nice and loud. A barred owl. Barred owl. We have a barred owl family not too far away. So the great horned owl has the ear tufts on its head. They're not actually ears, just like this one. Shows it like little ears, but they're actually feathers that cover the ear openings. And then this owl, can I borrow this? The barn owl looks a little bit more like a barred owl. It has a round head with no outside ear tufts. It still has ears, and the ears are in two different places on the head to help it hear very accurately to find mice and voles and things that it finds. And even in the dark, barn owls can fly around and grab a mouse even without seeing. So that's how good their ears are. So they hear really well. And maybe a mile in that direction, we have an owl. So let's give it a hoot and see what happens here. You guys want to hoot with me for the barred owl? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what the barred owl sounds like. <clears throat> sure what happened there. So owls are pretty vocal still at this time of the year. They're, they're fairly territorial. Oops, what happened here? Flip the screen, there we go. So we'll give it a try one more time. Do you guys want to hoot with me? Really loud hoots? Let's hear it. Ooh, 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 ooh. I think you were. Well, I'm not hearing any, any owls right now, but, um, but you might have a, a barred owl or a great horned owl or maybe a screech owl in your backyard. So I'd encourage you to go out there some night and have a listen. Um, owls will still be calling for the next uh, few weeks probably. 
And then you might start hearing some funny baby owl sounds in the summer. So, uh, so those sound quite a bit different. But, um, but thanks for joining us. Thank you for joining New Hampshire Audubon. And um, stay tuned every Wednesday at 10 o'clock. We have more, uh, more book readings. So uh, thanks for joining Storytime. And tune into our website and our Facebook page for more information. All right, goodbye, everybody. Can you say goodbye?